Uh, there he is. Good morning to you, Mr. Lockett. Thanks very much indeed for being Good with morning, us this Martin. morning. So, uh, what do you make of what you just heard? I mean, and let me ask you just a kind of philosophical question first. Is, is growing the economy the best way out of this crisis? Uh, having said all that, when we came out of the, the uh, pandemic crisis, the last crisis, and lurched into this one, the Scottish Government's message was clearly that the focus is on rebuilding the economy, regrowing the economy, putting the boosters on the economy. Rishi Sunak says that is the best way to get out of this. So I'm just asking you, I know you're, you're focusing a lot of your energies on the, on the bottom end of, of the economic spectrum, but, but what plans do you have to try and stimulate business, stimulate economic growth? I mean, so we need the UK government to use its powers. It seems that Rishi Sunak's probably going to hold uh, hold off on that until the autumn. He's not. He's got his you know finger on the trigger of the big bazooka. We keep being told, but he's probably not going to fire it until the budget in the autumn. Uh, he's an old Tory at heart, isn't he? He doesn't want to borrow more money. So oh, yeah. you're going to have to do more, I guess, in the interim then than just blame him. So so you know what 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 else can you do? Uh, we were just hearing from from our economic analyst there that y that your government has the power, if it wishes to do so, to to lower the rate of tax to, to, to lower business rates. You did that during the COVID pandemic for the, the retail and hospitality sectors. I, I mean, that's in your gift. Will you do that again? You've got the power to lower rates of tax. You've got the power to lower business rates. I'll tell you what else you've got the power to do. I mean, we, we get free tuition, for much celebrated free tuition fees. We get free prescriptions. We get free bus travel, many of us here in Scotland. Is there not an idea perhaps now that you could means test that? Because a lot of very, very wealthy people get advantage of all, take advantage of all this free stuff. Could you not take some of that back from them and redistribute it to the people at the bottom just now? Well, in terms of society, that's what people get back for paying their taxes. So you're saying we should perhaps reduce the taxes or, and take away some of their benefits to get the taxes. Well, desperate the times call for desperate <laughs> measures. And if people I can afford I, to pay for their own prescriptions, yes, why I, shouldn't I they? Don't think, I don't think... What pressure can you put on energy companies at the moment to try and change the system that they're operating? I mean, we pay quite a hefty standing charge just now, for example. Can Kate Forbes not go to the energy companies and say, listen, you guys have got to lower that a bit. Just take it easy on people. Well, of course, my, my colleagues in the government, we make representations all the time to the energy companies and other companies who've got a role to play here as well. But of course, energy regulation is reserved to the UK government as well. Right. So yes, we can make representations, but it needs to be people with the power to take the action. Yeah, transport's a massive issue as well, isn't it? I mean, starting tomorrow with this new rail timetable that is, is radically kind of shrunk from what it used to be. A lot of people simply aren't going to be able to get to their work. Uh, th there's a figure in the Sunday Times today suggesting that the, 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 the new rail kind of chaos could cost the Scottish economy £80 million a week, according to one analyst. This, this has got to be sorted soon, doesn't it? Uh, or the economy really will take a battering. Are you optimistic it is going to be sorted soon? You and run the railways. We're urging them as hard as we can to get this uh, resolved as you, quickly you as possible. You took over the running of the railways. Surely it's time to get in that room and clack heads together on behalf of all the people who are stuck on platforms and unable to go to their work. Uh, yes, it's now in public ownership, and that's so that the company is working for the benefit of the, the state and the public uh, and not uh, shareholders. But of course, it still operates at arm's length, and the Scottish Government is not a party around the table for these negotiations it's between the union. So, what's the uh, point of the, the Scottish management. Government taking over the running of the railways? Well, as I just said, the it's in public ownership, therefore it's about operating not on behalf of shareholders, but on behalf of the, the, the public interest in Scotland. But, but you took it over department. because you didn't think it was being run properly, and now we've got a third less trains. Yes, and some of the issues over the shortage of drivers go back to before we took over ScotRail and it will be sorted in the coming yeah, so, months. So you need... knew these problems were coming? You, you asked me why we took over ScotRail and some of the problems that were happening before. Uh, these issues are being addressed, but of course we've now got a pay dispute at the same time in the short term. Do train drivers earn enough? We were hearing the First Minister say most of them earn about 50 grand a year. One of the papers this morning saying they can earn up to £80,000 a year, and yet they're asking for much more. Do they earn enough as it is? Public sector workers, a lot of other public sector unions are asking for more money. Some of them asking for double-digit pay increases as well. Are they wrong to ask for that? Are they being too ambitious and unrealistic? Are we looking at a, a, a summer, an autumn, a winter of, of strikes and, and kind of economic misery?